Thank you so much for uh, hanging in there. Thank you so much for uh, hanging in there. And thank you for choosing our session today. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. We live in a dangerous world, and we work in dangerous environments. Uh, there's literally people who want to do us harm and steal from us. The beast that you can see on the screen shows major security breaches in companies over time. Uh, the size of the circle represents the number of records affected. And as you can see, over time, there's more and more, right? And in uh, starting around 2010, 11, 12, there's so many that you can barely tell the circles apart anymore, right? And these are, the, these are not small companies, right? These are big companies, the big guys, with a lot of IT budgets, a lot of security expertise, you know, big security teams. There's Facebook, there's Yahoo, there are uh, investment banks, there's Experian, they're the big guys, right? So what happened to them can happen to any of us. And um, we cannot always be safe, but there is a lot we, that we can do to protect ourselves. And so today we are very happy to have you guys here because we're gonna talk about what we do uh, to make sure your data is safe with Tableau because your data is your company's one of the biggest assets that your company has and you trust your data with you trust Tableau with your data so we want to talk about what we do to make it uh, to make sure it's secure this is Tableau server security in depth my name is Casper I'm a software engineer on Tableau server team I've been with Tableau for about three years I've been working on a Tableau server ever since I started and Dinch Hello, I'm Dinch uh, I've been at Tableau for about a year and a half uh, and I worked on Tableau Services Manager with Casper for about a year. Right. Okay, so here's a quick plan, what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna start with a general security model for Tableau Server, so we're gonna, so this is gonna be about uh, you know, how we place files on disk, how we secure them, how we, how we run our services, uh, very basic uh, you know, base layer so that we can build on later on in the talk. Then we're gonna switch on to uh, communications, uh, to service communication, and we're gonna talk about TLS, uh, how we secure that communication. Uh, then we're going to move on to how we secure all the secrets that we store in Tableau Server. And that includes the secrets that we generate automatically for connections between services, all that kind of stuff, and as well as secrets that you give us uh, that externally. Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, repository security, so how we, how, how we secure and encrypt all the data that is stored inside of our database. We're gonna talk about uh, some scenarios that have uh, security implications, so uh, adding new nodes and growing your cluster, and also upgrades. And then at the end, there's gonna be a very important section uh, for you to take away. It's gonna be a hardening section. Uh, so we, this is what you can do to make sure your Tableau server deployment is even more secure. And we're gonna have time at the end for questions. And um, if you have any questions, you know, as we speak in the context where we currently talk about, feel free to you know, ask these, we'll try to answer them. But if we, if we feel we're not pacing well enough, we're, we can postpone them to the, to the end. Um, okay, so like you see, this uh, session is geared towards more uh, of uh, IT administrators, right, the back end. Uh, we're not gonna, what this session will not be about is not gonna be about uh, content security, so we're not gonna talk about how you provision your users, how you provision, how you manage groups, uh, who can publish, who can uh, you know, edit, consume workbox. So we're not gonna talk about that. This is more on the backend side. If you are more interested in, the, in, in that kind of content, there was a great session uh, that already happened. Well, all the session already happened. Uh, but, <laughs> right. but there is a implementing Tableau server security that talks about how you secure your content and what you can do there. So this is a great, uh, it's all recorded. You can watch it um, you know, uh, whenever you want. Um, if you are uh, less familiar with uh, TSM, Tableau Services Manager, there was a session, uh, the introduction session to Tableau Services Manager that also already happened, uh, but there's a recording. Uh, however, this talk is kind of, is geared towards uh, uh, an admin that kind of knows what's going on. So when we talk about gateway or repository, we kind of assume that you guys know about uh, what we're talking about. Uh, but, if you're, but if you're new, you can uh, watch this session and it will introduce all these concepts to you. Uh, so let's get started with the actual content. So we're gonna talk about the users uh, and, and file system permissions. This is important because obviously everything has to live somewhere on the disk, right? And all your files live on disk, everything we, you know, all the configuration lives on disk. And ultimately this is where, where you know, the baseline of the security. Uh, this, uh, this is also important because everything 
that we talk after this is going to rely on that, right? All, the, all those secrets, all those encryption certificates that we're going to talk about relies on the file system security. So let's dive right into that. Uh, as you know, we provide TSM both on Linux and on Windows. So we're gonna, uh, I'm going to talk about both of these. And your adventure starts with Tableau Server, obviously starts with the installation. And installation, we're going to go through this really quickly because this is not really different than any other software that you would put on your servers. Uh, obviously, you have to be an administrator on Windows. And on Linux, you have to have pseudo permissions to install the packages that we provide. Uh, once the files go on disk, we basically get, uh, so, so in, in Windows, on Windows we install by default to program files, and on uh, Linux we have our own uh, subdirectory under opt uh, for Tableau server. So all the files, all the packages that we have go into, into those two directories uh, on Windows and on Linux. Uh, as far as permission goes, we, we basically inherit all the permissions, uh, default permissions of Windows in those, in, on, on, on Windows in these two directories. Uh, so uh, administer, administrators will have full permissions uh, onto, on, on these files, and you, all the users uh, will have read and execute permissions. On Windows, it's again a default. What happens on Windows, everything is restricted to root. Nobody else will have uh, permissions to those, direct, to those insta installation directories. One important implication here uh, is that once these packages, all those bits are on disk, everything is immutable. So even the running services will not be able to modify those packages on disk. Everything will be intact, so that, that takes care of our package integrity, and, and, and you know, we can ensure that what is running on the server is actually what we intended to. So once uh, the services are installed, uh, once, once we have files on disk, we can start up our services, and these have to run uh, under certain credentials. We're going to talk about Linux first, because this is much simpler. On Linux, we create a single local account called Tableau and a single local group called Tableau, and all services will be running as that. So it's a really simple security model, local account, no permissions on the network whatsoever. Uh, nobody, nobody, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really restricted to this local machine and this, and this local account. On Windows, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, we have multiple service accounts that and different services run as, uh, as different accounts. The only service that runs uh, with uh, a little elevated permissions is uh, our administration agent. And this guy runs as a local system which has uh, which is elevated permissions he, because he needs to manage all the other services. So, so on Windows, managing the services requires uh, talking to the OS, le OS level. And, and, and this uh, service requires that to, to, to be able to do its job. All the other services, all these accounts, are very low level, uh, either a local service uh, for license manager or a network service uh, for all the other services that require network access. But these, these are lowest, uh, lowest privilege accounts on Windows uh, boxes, out of the box. Another thing you can do, uh, another scenario, is our custom run as user account, uh, which allows you to provide, to create your own um, you know, AD account and, and specify to, to run all the services as this account. Uh, the recommendation is obviously that this account has minimal privileges on the network and, and you can run um, all your services at that, as that account. This opened up some, um, some interesting uh, business scenarios that, uh, that we're not gonna talk about it here, but, but that's, uh, that's another option that you can have. Um, okay, so once we have the services running uh, as under all these accounts, uh, let's talk about the data directory. So this is where all your data will go, and it includes the data that we generate, all the configuration files, uh, all the log files that we generate, and obviously your data that you submit to Tableau Server. So this is uh, the, the, the most important part of, of those uh, file systems and security. On Windows, we, by default, we will go to the program data directory. We create our own subfolders under there. And then uh, on Linux, we go by default to a var opt uh, Tableau, Tableau server directory. And the, you can modify those. You can, you can specify your own if you want to go somewhere else. But this is the default. Under the data directory, each of the services gets its own subtree of, uh, of directories. And this is a very simplified uh, view of this. Obviously, we have many, many, many more services. Uh, but each of these services gets a subdirectory under the root data directory. 
Now, the most important thing here is that we need to secure those directories uh, from, you know, from all the users, right? So the only users that need permissions on those directories are the service accounts that we talked about uh, just a second ago, so they, can, so they can do their job. But we don't want any other uh, users uh, on those computers to, to, to be able to access those directories. So what we do uh, on, uh, on Windows we basically break inheritance, break the permission inheritance on those directories at the service level, at the service instance level, actually, and we re-permission them with our custom accounts, whatever, whatever those accounts were, either a network service or, a, or your custom run as user account, we will re-permission that so only those accounts have access to those directories. And we will grant the, the read and write permissions to, for that service user. On, Windows, on Linux, again, on Linux, everything is a little simpler because we, had, we have just that one account and one group. So we, we specify a read and write permissions for those uh, and executable permissions on the files that needed and directories, right? So it's, it's, it's a very, uh, very simple model on, on Linux. So this is, uh, this is how we secure everything on disk. Um, and with that, we can start going a little deeper uh, into uh, what happens inside of the server. And I'm gonna have Dan uh, talk about that. All right. So um, from what Casper explained, it should be evident that Tableau server is composed of many different processes. And one thing that customers often ask us is, how do we ensure that these services talk to each other securely? So to that end, I'm gonna talk about transport layer security and how we use it at Tableau. So transport layer security is abbreviated as TLS or SSL. Uh, you'll see these terms used interchangeably both in these slides and in our documentation and also elsewhere on the internet. SSL was the precursor to TLS, so the name kind of just stuck around, but um, this can be a point of confusion, so I wanted to clarify that. Um, and before I get to how we use TLS at Tableau, I wanna take a couple of minutes to go over how TLS actually works. Uh, this might be a recap for some of you, or maybe new for some of you. Hopefully there's something you can take away either way. So, TLS is a digital protocol. It, is, it allows two parties to communicate over the internet securely without having ever exchanged any secrets in private beforehand. And for two parties to you know, secure their communications, the first thing they need to do is establish trust. So to talk about trust, I'm gonna use an example. So let's say you go to a website on the internet. Let's say it's Tableau Online. You're a customer, you have a site there, um, if you log in, you can access your workbooks and your data sources and all your private data and such. Now, as an end user, when you go into that website, before you put in your credentials, you really want to make sure that your credentials are going to be sent to Tableau Online and not to some third party that might be intercepting your communication. So to solve this problem, your browser and Tableau Online use TLS. What happens is you go to the website and Tableau Online presents a certificate to you. It's a digital certificate. It says, here's my name, so it's Tableau Online. Here's my domain name, online.tableau.com. Here's how long my certificate is valid for, so some future date. And it'll say, here's who issued this certificate to me. And there'll be a signature by the issuer, and it's a digital signature. Um, as an end user, you can actually inspect this issuer of the certificate. And we call entities that issue certificates, certificate authorities, or CAs. So you can inspect the certificate that belongs to the CA, and it'll have some similar information. It'll say, here's my name, here's my domain name, no, here's my public key, as in here's how I sign things. Um, it'll say, here's how long my certificate is valid for, and it'll also say, here's who issued my certificate. So there's this chain here where you know, every certificate has an issuer, and you can you know, trace these all the way back. And eventually, you'll arrive at a root certificate authority, or a root CA. Uh, this root CA also has a certificate, but it's a little different in that um, it is self-signed. As in, what the root CA is saying is, I am who I say I am, and I don't rely on anybody else's validation. And how this goes is, um, if you arrive here through a you know, chain of certificates originating from Tableau Online, and if you trust this root CA, you can also trust Tableau Online. This is called a chain of trust. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, like, I don't go around thinking which root CAs I trust. It's because this is abstracted away. This is made a little easy. Uh, what happens is your operating system vendors and your browser vendors maintain a list of trusted root CAs. 
and they push these to your machines. So the end user experience you get is you go to a website and you get a padlock at the top. Your browser says, I validated the certificate and I trust it. And in my browser, if I click on that, I land at a, I can inspect the certificate. So you know, this is Tableau Online, you know, issued to online at tableau.com. You know, there's a serial number and such. It's valid till 2019 <coughs> and it's issued by Amazon. So my browser looked at it and it trusted Amazon because it gave me this green padlock. I know it trusted Amazon this way. Uh, and you can actually inspect this uh, chain of trust. So if I inspect further, I can see you know, how this validation happened. Tableau Online presented a certificate signed by Amazon, and Amazon was the intermediate CA here, the intermediate certificate authority. And um, there's this chain going all the way up to this root CA. And evidently, my computer trusts this root CA because it came in that green padlock. Now, um, in practice, all of this happens as a part of something called the TLS handshake. I'm not really gonna go into the details. The important parts are, you know, if you're the client, go into a website. Um, to, to, for you to validate their identity, the server provides a certificate to you, just like we saw. And once the client validates this, they do something called a key exchange, a public key exchange. This we really care about, because it's really the crux of the security here. Once the client and the server exchange, exchange these keys, they're able to secure their communications by encrypting their data in transit. This makes it so that anyone that intercepts their communications cannot read this data. And this is really crucial for having security. So to recap, um, TLS allows for authentication or trust using these certificates. It also allows for privacy through encryption. Um, there's also a third guarantee that I didn't really talk about uh, it's message integrity. What that means is you can be reasonably assured that nobody's tampered with, with your messages before they made it over the wire. So this is our recap of TLS. Uh, hopefully, you know, everybody got something out of it. And this is really important for the following parts because I'm gonna be talking about certificates that uh, exist within Tableau Server. So I'm gonna talk about three components of Tableau Server. That's for TLS. First one is gonna be the gateway. This is the process that is the uh, front door to Tableau Server, as in all of your end users connect to the gateway to interact with your server instance. And as you can guess, we really wanna secure this because every single one of your end users is gonna talk to the gateway. The other one is the repository. So this is the database we use within Tableau Server. And as you can guess, databases contain a lot of information. In Tableau Server, the vast majority of your content is in the database. And the, the database is curated by processes within Tableau Server. And we wanna make sure that this data is not leaked in transit. And the third process I'll talk about is the controller for TSM, Tableau Services Manager. Um, this is the process responding to your administrative commands. And administrative commands tend to be sensitive by nature. It might include server secrets, you might be retrieving information about your server topology. Uh, so this is all information we really don't wanna leak. So I'll talk about how we use TLS there as well. Let's start off with the gateway. So here we have a simplified diagram of our server's architecture. Uh, what you should notice here is that on the left side, we got some clients that talk to the gateway. And the gateway relays these requests to the services in Tableau Service backend. Um, so you know these clients can be someone in a web browser accessing Tableau Server. It might be someone using Tableau Mobile, it might be someone publishing from Tableau Desktop. It might also be a user of tab command, our command line client tool. And so the gateway exposes APIs for all of these clients to use and then sends these requests to the backend to be processed. And the gateway is really just an off-the-shelf open source component. It is the Apache HTTP server. Um, and it does not come with TLS by default. So this is something you have to set up yourself. And part of the reason is that you need to provide Tableau with some information to set this up. So there are two sorts of SSL supported here. Um, they build onto each other. First, I'm gonna talk about the one that's called external SSL in our documentation. So if you wanna learn more about this feature, uh, make sure to look that up in our documentation pages. So how this works is you as the administrator generate a SSL certificate and the private key corresponding to it. Then you give this to Tableau Server and Tableau Server configures the gateway instances so that when an end user connects to Tableau Server, they're presented with a certificate. It'll have the data that you put in there. That way your end users can validate the identity of your Tableau server 
before they do anything with it, before they put in their credentials, which is something you really want to have. Additionally, after this validation, all the data transmitted to Tableau server is secured in transit. So if your user is viewing a viz, if they're editing their data sources, you know, if they're interacting with Tableau server in any way, that data is encrypted and secure. So that's something you really want to have. Um, the other kind of SSL is called mutual SSL in our documentation. This builds on top of external SSL. How that works is uh, with external SSL, what you got is your client, your user connects, and they can validate Tableau server's identity. With mutual SSL, we reverse the relationship, but in addition to this, your server can validate your client's identity as well. As in, for every single one of your end users, this Tableau server can check, hey, are they who they claim to be? Um, and how this works is your organization needs to be handing out uh, client certificates to every single user. So some organizations already do this. They have infrastructure for it. So if you have this already set up, uh, you just need to give Tableau Server the CA certificate and it can start doing this validation. So this gives you additional trust in that the server can also validate the client's identity. So if we go back to our architectural diagram, you know, we had our clients and the gateway receiving these requests and was relaying these to the back end. If you set up external SSL, all of these communications are secured. So all of this data is being transmitted securely. And the last thing, uh, I mentioned that you, know, you need to generate a certificate and a private key at Handy's the Tableau server. So this is sensitive data, and it is stored in the server configuration in encrypted form. So here I have a screenshot from a Tableau server instance. This is the one we use within Tableau internally. Uh, you can tell that my browser trusts it because I get that green padlock. If I click on it and inspect the certificate, uh, you know, I can see all the data I just talked about. You know, this is issued to this domain, it's issued to Tableau software, it's valid till 2019, and it's issued by Tableau's corporate IT. And my machine trusts our corporate ID because guess what, my machine was also issued by corporate ID. Next one is the repository. So you're back to our architectural diagram. Um, you, can see that, you can see that the repository has a different role than the gateway. Um, it does not receive any client requests. They still go to the gateway. Uh, however, you can see that requests that go from the gateway to the services in the back end, they are relayed to the repository sometimes when the processors need to query the database. Uh, as I briefly mentioned, the repository is the database we use within Tableau Server. This is also an open source component. It is a Postgres database. And Tableau Server stores the vast majority of your user content in there. Your workbooks are in there, your data source credentials are in there. There's also some metadata, like uh, you know, what permissions are set on which projects. Um, additionally, if you use local authentication, your usernames and hash passwords are also in here. So the repository contains a lot of important data. And all of its clients are processes within Tableau Server. They might be talking to it over the wire if you have a multi-node cluster and such. And, <coughs> and uh, the repository does not come with TLS by default. Um, so unlike the gateway, set up TLS here, um, you don't need your own certificate. You just tell Tableau Server to configure the repository for SSL, and it will generate the certificate for you. And um, because this is generated internally, it is a self-signed certificate. So there's no you know, external root CA that you happen to trust because all within Tableau Server. And this is okay because all of the clients are also within Tableau Server. You know, there are Tableau Server processes. So what happens is you run this one command to enable SSL for the repository, and Tableau Server distributes the certificate to all the processes that need to talk to the repository. And before they issue queries, they validate that the repository is the one that they want to talk to. They validate its identity. And then all the sensitive data is encrypted in transit. And um, just like the gateway, the secrets here live in the server configuration in an encrypted form. If you go back to our architectural diagram, you had the repository with a lot of uh, different Tableau server processes talking to it. If you enable SSL for the repository, all of these connections become secure. And um, here I have a screenshot from our online help. Uh, this is the command you have to run in order to enable SSL for the repository. I'm showing this to you because this is literally all you have to run. You run this and you get SSL for the repository. And if you're not a fan of the command line, we also have a web UI for this. If you go to the TSM web UI on port 8850, um, there's a UI page to enable SSL for the repository. And for most users, there's no reason not to enable it. 
Uh, but I'll talk about some of the considerations there in a second. I think there are a couple of questions. So, so I think the question is, uh, in older versions with tab admin, how to enable this? There's also a similar command. If you look up uh, repository SSL in our um, older documentation pages, you'll be able to find that. Um, I'll talk about it in a second too. So you, the question was, uh, you know, if I enable SSL here, how do I connect to the repository to enable build my own dashboards? Correct. Yeah, I will get there in a second. Yeah. Is there any other question? No. All right, we'll move on then. Um, the next component I'm going to talk about is the controller for TSM, the Tableau Services Manager controller. This is the process that all of your administrative commands are sent to, as in if you issue, you know, say TSM start to start your server that request goes to the controller. Um, this process also serves the web UI for TSM, like uh, the one that I just showed you with the options for repository SSL, the page that shows their server status. All of that is served by this process. Additionally, um, some of our installers talk to the controller. For example, if you are adding a new node to a cluster, um, this installer for this new node will issue a request to the controller to retrieve some data. So, in general, you can tell that the controller handles a lot of administrative stuff. And the nature of these administrative commands is that they're all quite sensitive. You might be retrieving a server secret. You might be setting a server secret. You might be viewing data about your server topology. And this is all data that we really don't want to leak. Because of this, the controller comes with SSL by default. As in, the first time you issue a TSM command, SSL is already set up. Your data is already encrypted in transit. And um, this is really crucial. So if you have used TSM, you'll know, oh no, before I get there, sorry. And because we set this up by default, uh, the certificate is also self-signed. And uh, one thing here is that if you have ever issued a TSM command, you know that you need to provide a username and password to talk to the controller. And um, TSM delegates authentication to the operating system. As in the credentials you enter belong to your operating system. So on Windows, you need to enter the credentials for a local administrator, and on Linux, you need to enter the credential for a user who is a member of this, this group. And if you leak this data, we're actually risking a lot more than Tableau Server itself. We'd be risking access to some machines in your network, perhaps. So it's really crucial that we have, we have SSL set up here. It's also really crucial that we don't leak the secrets that we use for SSL here, namely the private key for the controller's SSL certificate. So um, here is where we store that certificate. It is on either platform. Uh, it's in the data directory of the controller. Um, similar to what just Casper explained, this data is locked down by file system permissions. I'm telling you about it because if you end up modifying the permissions on your data directory, you will be risking leaking you know, your administrative data and you know, someone might be able to decrypt your communications and retrieve your admin password. So it's really important that, that, that this data is not available to any unprivileged users. Lastly, uh, I mentioned that you know, the certificate is set up by default, so the certificate is self-signed. Uh, so you might think, hey, how is that am I gonna trust the certificate? Well, um, when we set up the TSM command line client, we set it up so that you know, on Windows, we put the certificate in the system key store, so the TSM command line client trusts it. And on Linux, we put it in a predefined location that the client knows to look at. Uh, in your browser, you can add an exception for this when you first set up your server. And we also have some feature work coming up to let you uh, t tune this more carefully. And here I have the TSM web UI pulled up. This is port 8850. Um, if I click on the certificate, you can see that it's valid for a couple of years and it's issued by the TSM Certificate Authority. All right, so uh, this was TLS. Um, during that section, I talked about a few cases where we store some information in the server and I said it's encrypted in the server configuration. So that feature is called Secure Storage of Secrets. I'm gonna give you a little bit of detail about that. Uh, but if you wanna take a deeper dive, we have a documentation page about it. It's just a screenshot from there, and it's where you can find it. Um, this page will explain all the details about this feature in depth. I'm just gonna cover a couple basic cases here. So as an administrator, if you have ever inspected a configuration file on disk, you will find that it contains a lot of key value pairs. So you might find a username in there, and you might also find passwords. And what you'll notice is that the passwords are really not human readable. They're this long, long string. 
That's because we encrypt them so that someone who has access to just the configuration cannot read your service secrets. Um, now I mentioned that the secrets, you, you might be able to find this on disk, but this is only really copied to disk. The configuration originates from Zookeeper, which is Tableau server's coordination service. As in TSM puts some data there, and it's copied down. Sorry. So I'm gonna have a quick digression here um, to kind of briefly explain this part. This is a talk from last year. I just brought a slide from it. Uh, it shows you the configuration flow in TSM. Basically, if as an administrator, if you want to set a configuration value, you issue a command. You say TSM configuration set, you specify a key, and you specify a value. And if this value is, so this whole thing is sent to the controller, the controller inspects this data. If it is a secret, the controller encrypts it. And then it writes it to Zookeeper, which is our coordination service. And then on every server node, the TSM agent process downloads this configuration to disk, still in encrypted form, and it copies it over to every single service on that machine. And then at runtime, these services decrypt this data in memory to use it. Um, so there's a master key used here for encryption and decryption. This thing lives on disk and not in Zookeeper. So if anyone has access to just Zookeeper alone, <laughs> they cannot decrypt your service secrets. And uh, we generate this master key during the initial install. And Casper's gonna talk about how it gets to the other serving nodes. And um, we use symmetric key encryption here. This is the cipher we use. And uh, as I just said, each service decrypts these secrets in memory. All right, so um, we talked about a little bit of encryption for your configuration. But you're probably wondering, like, hey, what about all that important data in the repository? So I'm gonna briefly talk about that as well. As I said, you know, the repository is our database in Tableau server. It contains a lot of sensitive data. It contains your workbooks, your data source credentials. It contains your you know, user metadata, maybe some hash passwords. And we obviously want to encrypt this. So Tableau server knows which database tables on which, which columns on which database tables contain the sensitive information and encrypts those columns specifically. Um, and the keys we use for this, we call them asset keys. That's the term you'll see in our documentation. Uh, asset keys are really just symmetric keys. No, that's just our term for it. Um, and this is the cipher we use for encryption and decryption there. And um, like some other server secrets, asset keys are also managed by TSM. Let's go take a pictures. And <coughs> All right. So Casper's gonna talk about how you know, we change some of these secrets. So like you see, uh, there are a lot of secrets in Tableau Server. Some of them we generate, some of them uh, you provide. Those that we generate uh, include uh, SSL certificates, some passwords to connect to different services. We have the, um, we have the encryption, uh, the master encryption key that Dan just talked about that encrypts everything else. So there's, there's a lot of secrets in there. And, and you as savvy administrators know that the best practices for security that tell us to, to roll these secrets or change them or rotate, there's different terminology, but we basically need to occasionally change them and, and re-encrypt the data so that, you know, if anybody is trying to brute force attack on the data, uh, then, uh, you know, their efforts would be, you know, uh, would go to waste when we, when we rotate those keys. So you might be thinking at this point that, gosh, it's gonna be a lot of, man it's gonna be a lot of work for me to manage all this and, and rotate all these keys. The good news is that we have one TSM command that will regenerate all these uh, secrets for you. Uh, and the command is TSM security regenerate internal tokens. So what this command will do, it will, it will generate all these new passwords, all the internal passwords that we use to connect to Postgres, to the Redis, to Solar, to, to, uh, to anything. It will regenerate those master encryption keys and re-encrypt everything, uh, all, all the configurations. Uh, with those new keys. It will regenerate the internal SSL certificates. It will regenerate the uh, asset keys and re-encrypt the database that Dinch just talked about. Basically, everything, everything is uh, regenerated, re-encrypted, uh, and it will propagate all those keys to all the servers. So just one command to rule them all, and uh, it, it gets everywhere it needs to. Very easy for you to, to manage that. Yeah, 
yeah, that's uh, that's a, that's a general practice to, to to roll these periodically, and that period where you roll this would be you know kind of up to your IT policy, whether you do it you know every couple months or or you know more or less often. Yeah, there, there's a very similar command in tab admin as well. So if you look it up in our yeah. documentation, you'll find it as well. Yeah. yeah. There's a question there. Uh, that that depends on <laughs> the size of your cluster. Yeah. Um, uh, the regeneration itself, not as much, but then it will need to propagate everything and reconfigure all the services, which uh, which unfortunately at the time requires a restart as well when you reconfigure the server. So you will have to take a little bit downtime for that. Uh, but you know. As much as yeah, I would say, as much as your normal configuration takes to reconfigure the server, this would be pretty close to that. Maybe a little long because the encryption in a database uh, might take additional time. So, so. But, uh, good question. We don't, uh, uh, like we don't uh, ourselves manage that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I servers, would say we're developers. It, it might be like at least a half hour. I'm not quite sure. Depends yeah. on the size of a cluster. So. For smaller ones, it's, I don't know, like five, 10 minutes. Um, I think we had another question there. Could you say that last part again? Um, I think it does, yeah. So those are internal accounts we use. I believe it does also regenerate. So the question was, sorry, the question was, does it change the passwords for our internal database users like Tableau and read only. I think it does, but I'll have to double check that with you. And, um, yeah. I think our c documentation will mention exactly which secret. It should regenerate role. everything that is internally generated that you don't provide to us, right? Yeah. And everything. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll have to double check that. Uh, if yeah. you come after, we can follow up with you. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions for that? It's I'll probably I'll overkill. Prob probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the the real reason you do it is to protect against the brute force attacks. And we use like strong encryption keys in Tableau Server. So like those brute force attempts would take a long time. Yeah. And really, that regeneration just prevents you from those. Yeah. Uh, I think so a common case is like every six months or so, or like yeah. you know, if your server admin changed, you got a new guy hired. Um, that might be a reason. But overall, like, shouldn't be a common operation. Yeah. yeah. OK, moving on. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about these uh, two scenarios, which is growing your cluster <laughs> and, and running your upgrades. They have some uh, security implications that we want to make you aware of. Uh, so we're going to talk about a little bit. So as your company grows and as your uh, data analytics needs grow, so will your Tableau server uh, deployment, right? And you might be running a single node, and uh, you, you may need to add additional nodes at some point. Uh, this needs to be done in a secure manner, right? So uh, the, the important thing is to establish that two-way trust between the new node and the existing cluster, right? So the existing cluster has to trust the new node that he's, you know, he has, he's authorized to join the cluster and to, to work together. <coughs> and, then, and the new node has to, have, uh, has to be able to trust the existing cluster and, and be able to communicate with that. So I wanted to talk about uh, the, how, how we set this up. And we set this up through a process that we call uh, bootstrapping. So the first thing that we that when you want to join a new node to the existing cluster, the first step would be to download from the existing cluster. You can either do it from the web GUI or from the of using the TSM command line. You would download the bootstrap file. Uh, it's a JSON file. Uh, you can download this as an XML. So, but basically, you get a bootstrap file that contains some server information uh, of an existing cluster. Inside of that file, there is a couple pieces of information. Uh, there, uh, well, first set of information is basically identifies, it, it, it tells us where the existing cluster is. So it tells us a node ID, the machine address, the port, the administrative port that, the, that you're going to talk to when, when you extend that cluster. So that's the first part of the information. More importantly, that bootstrap file contains these two pieces of information. And one of them is a, is a certificate that identifies the existing cluster, right? So it's a, it's a public key uh, that, that identifies the cluster. And when we establish the two-way trust that the new 
node wants to trust the existing cluster, this is what uh, the certificate is going to be used to establish that trust. <laughs> Secondly, the bootstrap file contains the master uh, key, the, the master key store, uh, encoded key store that contains the master key to all the encryption that happens on the server that Dinge talked about. So that when the new node wants to get the initial configuration and he wants to talk to the cluster, he wants to encrypt, you know, decrypt all that information, he will have that information right here. It's very critical, you know, this is, this is very critical information. It's very important that once you join a new node to the cluster that you delete this file immediately because this, is, this file is basically a key, an entry key to your, to your existing cluster. So make sure to delete that. Once you have that file, you will, when you install a new node when during, during the installer, uh, you will have an opportunity to provide this file. You provide, and, and what you must also do is you might provide your credentials. So this is that second part of the, of the two-way authenticate, of the two-way trust, uh, that you have to provide a, your credentials to the, new, to the existing cluster um, your administrative credentials to, to be able to join that. Because this, all of this goes through the same administrative API, the TSM controller, uh, and so just like any other admin command, you have to authenticate and you have to have authorization. So this is a two-way trust uh, when, you, when you extend your cluster. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a relatively simple process, uh, but there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff going underneath, so uh, we wanted to make it work. The other uh, process that you're gonna uh, run occasionally is the upgrade process. So this is not, uh, well, so installed by itself, uh, we, we modified a little bit upgrade process uh, in TSM to, to, to do an upgrade. It's a two-step process. You basically install the new bits on every node of, on your cluster first, and then you, from any node, you run a single upgrade script that will go and update all the services on, on, on all your nodes. What is important to understand here, again, authentication and authorization must happen because everything, all of this will go again through the controller and, and has to be authorized. Well, and another thing to understand is that everything that, so that initially install, you have to install the bits on every node. This is the only operation that you do as an administrator. Everything like that second step to the, the actual upgrade, it runs as all these low privileged accounts. So every, everything that needs to happen uh, that requires uh, administrative elevated privileges happens when you install those new bits. So if we need to generate any new secrets or anything like that, uh, that will go somewhere uh, on, the, on, the, you know, on those nodes, then all of this has to happen um, during the, when you install those bits on the new nodes. All right, so this was uh, upgrade, and Dan is gonna talk about hardware. Yeah, so Casper um, and I told you guys about quite a few secu security features that we have at Tableau. And you probably noticed that some of them are opt-in, as in you had to set it up yourselves. So in this section, I'm gonna talk about a couple of those features and also a few other things that you can do as server administrators to ensure that your installation is secure beyond what we can give you out of the box. Um, and this is mostly gonna be covering items from our security hardening checklist. This is on our webpage. Um, please make sure to check this out, as I'll only be covering a couple, a couple of the line items from this list. Uh, also, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to try to hit the important ones. Uh, make sure to check out this list for all the details. I'll let you guys take your pictures. All right. So, um, Gateway SSL. I told you guys about this feature. I told you that the Gateway is the front door to Tableau server. Uh, so what this means is every single one of your end users is going to be talking to the Gateway, which means that the Gateway is by far the most exposed part of server. And you really want to make sure that that communication is done securely. So there's a command that does this. You have to generate your own certificate and give it to Tableau server. Um, and you should absolutely set this up. This protects your end users. This ensures that when they connect to your Tableau server instance, they can validate its identity. And then when they view their visits or edit their data sources and such, all that sensitive data is encrypted in transit. Um, a couple of caveats here. So because this certificate is generated externally, Tableau server cannot maintain it for you. You have to maintain it yourselves. So you know, one thing that can happen is that certificates expire. And if your certificate expires, your users will go to your web page and they'll find that your browser no longer trusts it. So please make sure to renew your certificate and give Tableau a new one before this happens. Additionally, certificates are scoped down to specific host names. So you know, if you grow your cluster, you may go gateway instance, that certificate may no longer be valid because the host names have to match. So you need know, to pay attention to that as well. Next up, repository SSL or Postgres SSL. 
Uh, not much else to say about this feature. Like the repository is our database. It, is, it contains a lot of sensitive data, and it's a high value target. Anyone who looks at our architecture will say, oh, there's a database. That must be sensitive. So by setting up SSL here, you get some defense in depth, and you also get to protect this data in transit. And this is very easy to set up. It's a single command, as I showed you, or a single option in the UI. Um, and for most use cases, there's no reason not to set this up. Now, um, if you query the database externally, uh, you might find that you don't want to trust this certificate. So then perhaps uh, you may not want to set it up. Um, and, you s and the command allows you to allow Postgres to accept connections from outside the cluster as well. So check out the documentation for this feature. Uh, it might clarify some of the questions you have. Could you say that again? Uh, no. No. And then it secures that better as well. Yeah. The question was about backup and restore. Next up is the firewall. This is a really important thing. Our recommendation is that you run Tableau Server behind a firewall. The only ports that are exposed to the world should be those of the gateway. So that's port 80 by default. And once you set up SSL, which you should, then it's port 443. Uh, additionally, with TSM, if you want to administer your cluster remotely, you might want to open up the port for TSM, which is port 8850. But everything else should not be accessible from the outside. Additionally, within Tableau Server, if you have a cluster, you should set up your firewall so that the only ports that are open are those that are needed by Tableau Server processes. Uh, we have a couple articles on our webpage about setting up your firewall precisely for Tableau Server's use case. So please make sure to check that out, and I'll have the links at the end of the slideshow. Um, and additionally, there's a command in TSM that shows you which ports are used by which services. So you can use this to you know, figure out which ports you need to have open in addition to our documentation, and also tell you know, which server node is using it, which process is using it, and which port is it. So uh, this is another helpful command. We have a question here. So the risk there is, uh, so as I said, the TSM controller uses SSL. So I don't, I mean, whenever you open up any port, there's some risk, like, like you know, there can be you know, denial of service attacks and such. But overall, uh, I would say that's pretty secure. You know, we're using SSL. You need to use a username and password to log in and such. So um, I would say it's worth it. I'm not quite sure, do you know? Unfortunately, uh, Calvin knows. All right, um, let me cover the last part so that we have some time for questions. This one is also very important. Um, Tableau server needs to be isolated from local unprivileged users. Um, as in, nobody else should be able to log in. Like, other than a server administrator, no one should be able to log into this machine, either physically or over the network. Um, this is a, you know, one of the design assumptions of Tableau server. And we're improving this area. But you know, as I said, you know, not every, pro like I said, you know, a couple of our processes use TLS, but not all of them do. So unless you set up this, and unless you set up a firewall, your installation is not secure. Next up, upgrades. So I'm going to talk about a couple kinds of upgrades you might need to do. One of them is those provided by your operating system provider. So this might be Microsoft if you're on Windows. It might be Red Hat if you're on Linux or Amazon and such. Um, Tableau Server needs a secure base to run on, and your operating system vendors keep publishing patches to their kernel. And it's really important that you update it with, you are up to date with these. The past year or so has been quite interesting in terms of exploits found on the hardware level, so these will protect you from those as well. Um, next up, so you know, if there is a vulnerability found in Tableau Server, our product security team publishes an advisory on our security bulletins page. This advisory will say, you know, here's the vulnerability, here are all the versions that are affected, all the products that are affected, here's how to mitigate it, and here's the risk. It's important that you monitor these bulletins. We always send out an email along with our release notes. And uh, you know, because sometimes the, the mitigation involves upgrading. So it's important that you watch these bulletins page, because it might affect your decision to upgrade. <laughs> Lastly, we're always working on security features at Tableau. And you know, check out the release notes. You might find that there's a new shiny feature that you want to get. Uh, with vulnerabilities, if there's, you know, if there's a vulnerability, we fix it in all of our supported versions, but new features usually only make it to the latest releases. 
So you know, check out the release notes page. Uh, that might affect your decision to upgrade as well. All right, so that's all we had for you guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, please make sure to fill out the survey, and I think we'll open up the floor to questions. Right. Another question. Mm -hmm.